Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. So this video, we're just gonna kinda talk about my hair journey and I'm also gonna be showing you how I did this wash and go. Please keep watching. Thank you. So let's get started. My hair is freshly washed. I got out the shower and I haven't put anything in it. I haven't put anything in my hair, so. I'm gonna start off by putting some olive oil in my hair and this is just something that I put in a container and it's literally from the kitchen. I kind of want to start from the beginning of, you know, my whole hair situation or even back when I was younger, I've always had medium length to long length hair for basically my whole entire life. And I had never got any perms. My mom never let me do anything crazy to my hair. It really didn't start till I got to middle school where I loved seeing other people with straight hair and I wanted to have straight hair too. So my mom would start taking us to this lady. Her name was Miss Moore and she had a little shop out in Third Ward, Houston. Yeah, we would go there. She would do our hair. She had one of those old school like press and curls. I don't know what you call them. But, and so she would put a lot of grease on our hair and she did a really good job at getting our hair super straight. And even though her straightener would be on the highest heat possible, because she used so much grease on her hair, I literally never had any heat damage just from going to her. But when I was that young, I never liked wearing my hair curly. I never liked wearing it natural. I thought it was too big. I liked having the straightest hair possible. When I got to high school, I wanted to dye my hair and my mom let me do it and I did it myself. I don't even know if I like watch any videos on how to dye your own hair, but I bought a bleach from Sally's and I think the name of the, the brand was called like Thunder or Lightning or something like that. But it came in a black box and I thought it looked really good, you know, for what it was. Obviously, I'm not a hairstylist. So when you're younger, you know, you want to experiment. And I did that. So I even had an aunt tell me, oh, you know, you better make sure that you're keeping your hair moisturized. Make sure that you're oiling it up all the time. And when you're younger, you don't listen to what people tell you to do. So, of course, I did not listen. Oh, and this, I know it looks like Fix Plus, but it's not. I actually took out, well, I used all the Fix Plus, and this is just a, a bottle of water right here. Over time, it became really damaged. I was straightening my hair every single day, as well as dyeing it too, occasionally, you know, once a year. So my hair was starting to break off really badly, and sorry, this first product that I'm using is a Curl Enhancing Smoothie. There you go, curling nice and smoothly. And I'm gonna do this in sections. And at that time, I was into YouTube, but not heavily. Like I would watch other people's videos about natural hair, and really I was only looking to see, you know, their journey, their transformation. I, I would wear my hair in buns literally every day. And then I was like, okay, well, my hair is looking kind of lifeless right now, so let me just go ahead and cut my own hair. And I literally cut my hair maybe a little longer. Well, it was like to my shoulders. And I liked it, it was really cute. Eventually I got to the point where I'm like, okay, okay I'm gonna stop straightening my hair. Months have gone by, my hair is growing out. The whole dead ends, that whole situation, that I wasn't really into the whole labels, like transitioning, big chop, wash and go, all that good hair stuff. I was transitioning and I didn't even realize it. I was like, let me just literally cut my hair off. And it was kind of spontaneous the day that I decided to do it. I didn't even plan on doing it. I just woke up and I was so frustrated. And I literally just took scissors and I cut my hair. I couldn't believe it. And I kind of felt a little subconscious because when you're used to having a f you know, a full head of hair, it doesn't matter if it's short, medium length, or long. When you're used to having hair, then you basically go to having no hair. I feel like hair can be a security blanket for you. And it, it was my security blanket at the time. And so that day I had to go to the store. Actually, I had to go to the bank, I'm sorry. And one of the bankers, he was trying to flirt with me. And I'm over here like, 
you talking to me? Like, <laughs> and it's not that I thought that I was unattractive or anything, but I just did not feel as pretty as before because my hair was so freaking short. And I kind of felt like a boy, I didn't have on any makeup, but from that, you know, whole period, it kind of taught me like, okay, it's just hair, it will grow back, but this is a period where you need to really build up your self-confidence. So that just kind of, you know, goes to show for anyone that has like a major change in your appearance, whatever the case may be, you have to really learn to like look within yourself and, you know, know that you are beautiful no matter what transition you're going through in your life. So after that, I started to wear clip-ins and I was doing this quite often. I was going back and forth between wearing clip-ins and doing my two twists in the front. The two twists is really super simple and easy for me to do. I'm using my favorite twist defining cream. There was even a short period where I wore wigs to work and I love kind of having the versatility. I feel like when your hair is natural, you can do so many different things with your hair. And that's really kind of where I experimented with my hair, which I had never really done before. I was only used to wearing my hair straight. From then, I even did uh, box braids and I love the way the box braids looked, but I feel like they snatched out some of my edges. So, I definitely won't be doing the box braids anymore because after I took those things out, I was like, oh my God, I'm bald around the edges and eventually they grew back, but box braids are gonna be a no for me. I kind of felt like it took forever. I feel like when you're, when you first cut your hair, maybe even like the first year, it kind of feels like it's a really slow process. I remember my hair couldn't even fit in a ponytail for the longest time. And it's like your hair grows at a slow rate. So it's not like you can really tell from one week to the next how long your hair has gotten. Of course, now it's been, it's been about a little over two and a half years. So, oh, and the last, Pro, um, sorry, the last product that I used is the smoothing gel. And y'all, I normally never put three products in my hair, but I'm trying something different. So we'll see how it turns out. I did my big chop in June of 2014. So months had gone by and I was graduating college in December, 2014. And I really wanted to wear straight hair. So I'm gonna go and get a U-part wig made. And then I'll just have a little leave out in the front, no big deal. So I did that. That did not turn out so good for me because my leave out got heat damaged. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and cry, you know, about things like that or dwell over it. It's not that big of a deal. So I was like, okay, I just gotta go ahead, cut this damaged hair, and I'll just start over with this part. The rest of it is already growing out, so whatever, it is what it is. I was making sure that I was taking care of my hair, so putting oil on it, coconut oil, olive oil. I just made sure that I always had my hair tied up in some kind of way so that it wouldn't dry out. Now, two and a half years have gone by, and I feel like my hair does grow out of pretty decent rate. Everyone is not the same. I know that I I see people ask certain things like, how do I make my hair grow faster? I feel like you can definitely take care of your hair and that can help to prevent your hair from, you know, excessive shedding. Everyone's hair growth is not at the same rate. You can't see someone else and be like, oh, her hair, you know, grew at this rate and mine will too. Everyone is not built the same, everyone is different. You just have to keep that in mind. And especially when you see people try certain products and stuff on YouTube, it may not always work for you. Um, I am, however, the type of person I don't like to spend a whole lot of money on hair products. I don't have a cabinet, a cabinet full of hair products. I've seen a lot of people where they're like hair junkies 
and they literally have something for everything. I'm not one of those people, but I have found things that have worked for me. So I think that's definitely the key, finding things that work for you and um, just, just trying things, but knowing that you don't have to uh, be excessive about it. That's that's what I'm looking for. You don't have to be excessive about it. I want to inspire people like you can do this. Feel confident about the decision that you're making when it comes to your hair. If you're like, uh, I'm stuck in a rut. I want to do this big chop. I don't know how I'm going to look. Just go for it. I feel like the longer you wait, then that's more time that you could have been spending you know, getting to where you want to be. Just go ahead and do it. Just go for it. Go for the things that you want in life. Okay, y'all, so I just finished. Is it just me or does anyone hate having wet hair on the back of their neck? That's how I feel right now. That's why I feel like I have to put something over here when it starts to get, ugh, you know, like, if you're watching and you wanted to kind of watch this video to get some inspiration on whether or not you should do a big chop just to see someone else's transformation like I used to do before I did my big chop, then I say to you, please go for it. Please do it. Um, stop procrastinating on it. Just, just do what you need to do because you will get the results that you're looking for. You just have to have a lot of patience this is the results. So yeah, thanks for tuning in and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.